What's up, YouTube? This is Red Zone 101. What have I got here? We're going to get to that in just a moment. Hey, guys, before I begin this video, I just want to say, um, I uh, want to send a prayer out to uh, our brother. He's another YouTuber, um, Elder Wright. Okay. He did a video just recently asking for prayer for his unborn grandson that has a brain tumor. So those of you that know the word of prayer, just send a prayer out to him. Um, you know, pray that his son has a safe, uh, his grandson has a safe uh, delivery. We know with God that all things are possible, that he gets the care that he needs to help him to live a full and hopefully um, happy life, okay? Um, and uh, most of all, we're going to pray for healing, all right? So my prayers, all the right, they go out to you, all right? Um, his son's name is, I think, Curtis. Uh, Daughter-in-law, I think, is Monique. So keep them in your prayers. We got to support each other, okay? So anyway, let's get back to the video. Guys, did it again. I got another one. This right here is a new handgun I just bought. It's a Stoger SR, let's try it again, STR9. Still getting used to the name of STR9S Combat. So make sure this gun is unloaded. There we go. Unloaded. I went to my local gun shop and I saw this about maybe a month ago. Picked it up because I just love the way this gun looked. I thought it was really aesthetically, I thought it was really a nice looking gun. Picked it up, tried the trigger, and um, wasn't that impressed at first, okay? But after looking at some reviews, I thought, you know what? Let me go back and try it again because everyone seems to love this particular gun right here, especially the uh, new Stoger uh, STR series pistols, STR9 series pistols. Uh, they've taken the budget uh, semi-auto hand world, ha handgun world by uh, storm. Um, a lot of people love them. So this is the latest model that just came out. Um, once I looked at a couple more reviews on it, because even when I left my local gun store, I kept thinking, man, that was a really nice pistol. Let me check out the reviews on it. And there's not a lot of reviews, but the, well, not a lot on this particular model. This is pretty, it's pretty new, but the reviews were really nice. I mean, they were some good reviews. They were saying that it's a good shooter. Um, and I got to say, yes. Now I want to talk about some pros and cons with this particular gun here. I've owned it for about a week now or so. Um, and I got to be honest with you when I went back to buy it, cause I thought, I want that gun. I want to put that in my collection, right? Um, the gun comes with, I mean, combat ready sights, uh, suppressor ready sights, comes with a threaded barrel, comes with a mag well, comes with a steel guide rod. Guide rod is steel. Um, what else can I say? Um, just a really I mean, soft shoot, well, soft shooting, but I'm just saying it came with a lot of features and it came with three 20 round mags, three 20 round mags. And this particular gun here with all these features, suppressor ready sights, threaded barrel, steel, steel guide rod, mag well, and uh, three 20 round mags. I got this gun with all that for under $600. It came to about $549. That was a deal I was thinking, you know what, I'll take a chance on that. Now, I didn't know a lot about this gun when I first got it, just what I saw on the reviews, and uh, I was willing to give it a shot. It's basically, if you take off the slide, it looks just like a Glock on the inside. They're calling it a Glock clone, but the grip angle isn't the same as a Glock. I mean, that grip angle, I'm not sure what degree where that is, but it just feels different. I've owned Glocks, and I never, Glock is a great pistol. For those of you that love Glocks, I'm not downing it. I just said for me, I didn't like the grip angle on them, and I didn't like the trigger. This here, I love the grip angle on it. I mean, it just feels natural. It points natural. Um, the trigger. I've never liked Glock triggers. 
I know Glock triggers are Glock triggers. They work, but never really liked them. This to me is kind of an improved Glock trigger. Uh, it's basically like a Glock, but to me, it doesn't feel quite the same. Um, the trigger pull is supposed to be like four pounds. I pull it, I hit a wall, press through. I mean, it's a nice break. Reset, right there, boom. I To me, it felt a lot better. A lot better than a Glock, okay? Now, granted, it wasn't as nice as some of the Canics, but I kind of like this a little more than the Canics, the trigger, because sometimes the Canic triggers can be a little, although I love them for target practice, can be a little light, okay? And, as, and in a self-defense situation, uh, you're under stress, what have you, your adrenaline's going, you don't want a trigger that's too light. Now, don't get me wrong, you can get used to a lighter trigger. I think, I think those triggers and mechanics are like 3.5 pounds or something like that, maybe three pounds, don't quote me, but it's a light trigger. Excellent trigger for target practice, even for self-defense if you practice. But I wanted something with a little more can put it there it's not going it's not going to uh to break yet give a little bit more boom fire and the reset i like that better so again not quite a glock clone but if you look on the inside it looks a lot like a glock okay but to me it's a modified glock now let's talk about some of the things i didn't like when i first bought this pistol i gotta be honest with you I was kind of thinking, man, did I did I screw up? Because I sold a couple of pistols to get this one, okay? No, I sold a gun to get this this one. But um, when I first got it, you know, I put a little oil on it. Um, I took it to the uh, I took it to the range. I put a couple of shots through it, and my first shot, I got a stovepipe, and I was like, okay. You know, stuff happens. Let me try it again. Second shot. Fire pretty good. Then stovepipe. Another stovepipe. And I'm like, man, what's going on? So I called up the uh, my firearm dealer I got it from, and I told him the issue that I was having. And uh, he said, well, bring it in. We'll take a look at it. And uh, basically, if we can't fend it, if we can't fix it, let's try that again. We'll send it back to Stoger, and we'll get it taken care of for you. I've been shopping with this one shopping at this one firearm dealer for over 20 years. They've always taken care of me. If you get a chance to, if you're in Michigan, check out Michigan and St. Clair Shores. Great bunch of guys there. They've got a nice selection, really reasonable prices, new and used firearms. And they can get just about anything you're looking for if it's available, okay? But anyway, so... You know, they said that I felt a little better, but I didn't want to send a brand new gun back to the dealer, okay? Because, you know, it could take two, three, a month or whatever, depending on how backed up they are to get your gun back. So I said, let me see what I can do. So I opened up my gun, took a real good look, okay? Now, I was having a problem, not so much with bought ammo, but flat nose ammo I was having an issue with, okay? So... What I did is I took my gun apart, comes apart well, like a Glock. Let me see here. Pull it back a little bit, pull the trigger, slide comes off. Take out my guide rod here. Guide rod is really stiff, it's brand new, okay? Take out the barrel, there's my slide, my barrel. And what I noticed here, now you see this black coating that's on the, uh, the actual barrel. This is a threaded barrel, really nice. Um, but I noticed this black coating that was on it was also on the feed ramp. And I thought, I went and I took my finger, I touched this like, wow, that's really rough. So I thought, you know what, let me see if I can make this a little smoother, right? So I took some real fine sandpaper, sanded down my feed ramp, and I, even this part right here, where it comes to like a uh, kind of an L shape, like right here, I noticed that my flat nose ammo was hanging up right there on this part here. So I beveled that just a little bit, just a little bit with some really fine sandpaper. Once I got it to where it was really smooth, I think I used 
220 grit or something like that or what have you. But anyway, then I took some mother's polish, took my Dremel, polished it up really, really, really good there. Now, if you could touch this, I'm telling you, that right there feels like butter. I mean, that right there is a really smooth bead wrap. So anyway, once I did that, took my slide, cleaned it out really, really, really good, you know, because sometimes you'll get some fine, um, you know, uh, particles in here from when they're making it, what have you. So I cleaned that out real good, oiled it, and um, took, my, uh, took my barrel, put it back in, let's get that in there. Took my guide rod, put it back together. And this was the other issue that I noticed. This was another thing I didn't like about it when I first got it. Okay. Took my gun here. Took the slide. Okay. Went to put it back on and it would hang up right here. I couldn't get it to go back. And, you know, a Glock, this is basically the same style takedown like as a Glock, you might as well say. But I couldn't get it to go back on. So after fit, fiddling with it, I found out if you push this, the trigger up just a little bit as you're bringing it back, I was able to get it on. Now that happened to me and that did have me concerned. I was really concerned with that because I'm used to taking my firearms apart and cleaning them and maintaining them. So if I've got a firearm that I can't take apart, you know, and do a thorough cleaning, that's an issue for me. But anyway, but I'm not sure what happened after finally getting it back together and talking to my friends at Michigan and them showing me a couple of things to do. Now, all I do is I bring it back, push that up just uh, a little bit. Let's see if I can, can get it to go back now. Just a little bit. Wait a minute, hold up. Now see, give me a little bit of an issue. There we go. What? Nope. Hold on. Make sure that the guide rod is in there good. Not used to having this much of an issue with getting a firearm back together. Okay. And this is going to happen on camera. Guys, this is what I was talking about. This is one thing I didn't like. Now see, Yesterday when I did this, now see, I got it back on. Back on, together. So, not as easy to take apart and put together as a regular Glock or uh, or else even my uh, canning. But, you know, it's back together now. So I didn't like that. But I can get it back together. So, you know, once I got it back together, took it to the range, put about maybe a 100... 150 rounds to it, not a single issue. Once I polished the feed ramp in here and beveled the the, uh, the bottom of the feed ramp where the flat nose ammo was hanging up, this gun runs really, really nice. Besides, like I said, it can be a little tricky getting it back together. I can work with that. But for the price that I got this gun, I mean, we're talking about a tactical semi-auto nine millimeter handgun. Now granted this gun is made in Turkey. I don't hold that against them because you have a lot of nice guns that are coming out of Turkey. Turkey's not, and uh, Stoger used to be just known for um, shotguns. Now they're coming out with some pretty decent semi-auto handguns. But anyway, I was so impressed with the performance and not a single jam after that. And I'm basically getting some really nice tight groups with this gun. And it's very soft shooting. And it's fired just about everything I put in it. I was so happy with the way this came out and the price and the few things I had to do on my part to make it more reliable, which wasn't really a big issue for me because I'm used to doing a little work to my firearms and I knew I could, I could make this better. I did put a sleeve on it, but I like this gun so much Went out and bought a second one, <laughs> I gotta say. I mean, what I loved about it, I'm trying to simplify my life. Let me make sure this is unloaded, it's unloaded. 
is that I I like the ideal of having a handgun, two handguns that take the same ammo, nine mil, and will both take the same map magazine. So if I ever had an issue with one of these, I could always just switch, grab the other firearm, and I can use the mags in both guns. So I like that. It's it's kind of simplifying things, you know? But like I said, um, when I picked it up, I just loved the way this gun felt. It felt just, it just felt great. I mean, whether my left hand, whether my right hand, it just felt good to me. So those little bit of things, those few things, little bitty things that I had to do to make it better was okay with me. Now, I know some people have bought these guns and haven't had a single issue. That wasn't my experience. But the few issues I was having wasn't enough to deter me from once I got those taken care of and I knew what to do, did not deter me from buying a second one. So now I have two Stoger STR-9S combats and both of them came with three 20 round mags. To me, that was a great deal. It was a deal that I just couldn't pass up. And I was willing to let a couple of my other nine mils go so that I could get these two guns right here. I mean, let's try, try not to lose that in there. There it goes. All right, it dropped. But now I have two guns that take the same mag and take the same ammo. Okay. And right now, with the way things are going, um, people, I'm going to say this. You better get what you're going to get now, firearm-wise and what have you, because these new gun laws are coming up with are not basically in our favor. Um, just my own personal opinion. And uh, I don't think they're really going to do much good. I mean, in curving crime, because uh, the only people that are going to follow these new gun laws are the people that are following the old ones. Those are law-abiding citizens that are already following the law. Just my own personal opinion. But that said, I think certain things are going to get harder and harder to find. Now, one downside I will say to this, um, there's not a lot of aftermarket parts for it. Like with the Glock, you know, with Glocks, you can get just about anything, holsters, sights, accessories, triggers, this and that, barrels, port it, and what have you, or slide cuts in your slot. You, I mean, Glocks are some of the most customizable semi-auto handguns out there. This doesn't have that kind of support. So, and the same thing with holsters. Holsters may be a little challenging to find for this. Now, good thing for me, that a couple of my older holsters, like this one right here, just an old, uh, what is this, uh, uh, Saint Tez, I'm trying to remember, trying to read the name on here. Hang on, it's an older hol holster I've had for some time. Uh, Decentis. This holster actually works with this handgun, so I didn't have an issue with finding a holster. Now some of you might. Um, but I didn't have that. Actually, I found a left-hand one. Let me see. This is a Geico. I'm not sure which holster I had that for. But this also, if I want to do a wield, which I don't plan on, but anyway, <laughs> also fits the left-hand one. So I'm pretty much set. But that may be an issue that some of you might have if you buy this particular handgun. Now, this handgun comes in a uh, plain cardboard box. I guess that's how they help to keep the price down. Nothing fancy, not, nothing special, but hey. But again, for what you're getting with this gun here, three, count them, three, 30, let's try again, three 20 round mags. I mean, you got a mag well, suppressor ready sights. Um, it's optic ready. I didn't mention that. Got a threaded barrel. Um, Picatinny rail here for a, a lighter, what have you, laser. Um, and like I said, it just feels, to me, this just feels better in my hand than any Glock I've picked up. And actually, the Canics are really good too, but this feels just as good. And for a fraction of the price of what you would pay for another semi-auto 9mm with all these features. Anyway, 
this right here, just wanted to show that to you. Something you might want, if you're looking for a good tactical nine mil, something you might want to check into. The only thing I say is um, to look out for some of the issues that I had with mine. But like I said, they weren't deal breakers. They weren't deal breakers to the point that I went out and bought another one. I mean, <laughs> what's better than one nine mil semi-auto? Two. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to keep you. Um, it's hot out here in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, we've had these past uh, couple of days some of the worst air quality in the world due to those wildfires in Canada. Hope, hopefully, they'll get those under control. And, uh, yeah. So, I'm not going to stay out here for too long. I just want to say, remember, keep Elder Wright in your prayers and his family. Pray for his unborn grandson. Hopefully, they have a safe delivery and everything goes well. Um, we got to, as I said, we got to support each other. You know, seriously. Anyway, thanks for watching. God bless. I hope you guys have... A great summer. I got more more uh, content coming. Uh, keep me in your prayers. You're in mine. And uh, as always, watch your six. Again, God bless. Peace. Let me know what you think about this gun right here. I'm loving it so far. A couple of issues, but not a deal breaker. All right, people. Take care. Peace.